Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 10 of my favorite coastal Halloween DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. We have my famous haunted beach house. We have a sea witch, a rope spider, this cute little ghost rug. I made some vases out of skulls. I made a black cat out of rope, which turned out so cute. I took a whole skeleton family and they're enjoying their day at the beach. Super fun. I made a spider web out of rope, a nice coastal touch to that. And we have a sea witch hat using the witch hat reform and a rope ghost. So let's get started. Our first DIY is going to be the Haunted Beach House. I'm using two of these little toy doll houses from the Dollar Tree from the toy aisle. They have a couple different kinds. This is kind of the cutie uh, white and pink version. And um, they're two halves, so if you pop them together, you will have a whole house. I thought I would make it into a beach house. Going to take it outside and spray paint that with some light blue for a good starter. And then it's got a lot of great little plastic details on there. So I'm just going to go over with some blue. I mixed together some agave and some lighter color blues. And I'm just going over with a chunky brush and kind of distressing all over. Just to make it look very coastal, very weathered. I don't want it to look real uniform in the blue color. And yeah, it's gonna be like two front of the houses, but that's fine. So I just popped them together. They have little clips on the side. Now it wasn't very tight at the top though, so I did do a bead of hot glue to glue the roof line together. And you can see some of the paint was coming off from the spray paint. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of that on there, so I'm just touching up any areas where I don't want to see any of the pink through there. And I just want a nice beachy blue house. And I thought we would make this into a beach house. Now, to do that, I thought it would be really cute to have the beach house up on stilts. And so I'm going to make stilts out of some of these little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. I have four stilts and I'm just gluing two together to make the stilts. Um, this little wood piece is just something I had left over from a, a Dollar Tree project. I think it came just in like one of those little um, decoration packs. You can kind of use whatever you have, but I went ahead and made a base out of that. Now to that, I am gluing on one of the Dollar Tree bamboo cutting boards. That's going to be the bottom of our beach house and nice stable base. And we're going to put the house on top just like that. Now, um, it's a beach house. So of course, we need to have sand at the beach. So I'm going to cover the little bamboo cutting board with just school glue and a foam brush. And then I'm going to use Dollar Tree sand and start covering the base with the sand. I went ahead and glued everything to it first because I needed that good connection um, against the wood, so the sand definitely will come later. Now, I'm gonna go over with a little bit more like spray glue and a little bit more sand until I get really good coverage there at the bottom. I was trying to use some tacky glue here and I thought we would do some of those little blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree to kind of represent the blue water from the ocean, like lapping up against our little beach house. And that's a really strong, thick glue, so I thought that would hold the little pebbles down well. Just like a little quarter of it, gonna be underwater. And again, I just sprayed that sand with a little of that spray glue from the Dollar Tree and then glued my little beach house to the wood panel so it is now attached. 
I found this little, um, it's a little lip gloss, and it was a pink flamingo, but for Halloween, I thought it would be cute to make a black flamingo. So I'm just painting the little lip gloss from the Dollar Tree black so we can have a cute little decoration for our haunted beach house yard. Once I got it on, it kind of needs legs, right? So I'm just gonna use a couple toothpicks and I kind of cut those down and I'm gonna glue those kind of like sticking out each way like a little pink flamingo for your yard would have little legs and that will be a fun decoration. Now, this was my son's idea and I absolutely love how it turned out. I took some of that model magic from the Dollar Tree and made a tentacle. And then in that tentacle, I just used an ink pen that wasn't open to make little tube feet shapes, little circles all over. And we're going to have this haunted beach house being attacked by a sea monster. I thought it was a great idea. So when I just roll it, I just make one end skinnier to give me that tentacle. And then I dot, dot, dot all over with the pen to cut little circles in it that look like little, like octopus tube feet. And I'm just kind of putting those on that area that would have been underwater and then having them kind of like they're attacking the beach house in different positions. If you had any colored uh, model magic or clay or anything you want to use like that, you could totally use that. I'm going to use white and I'm just going to attach it to that little rocky area with hot glue on the end and kind of having it up touching the house. So it'll kind of have something to stick to. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry a little bit to harden before we paint it. For the yard, I'm just gonna use some succulents from the Dollar Tree, glue that in the sand to look like seagrass. And then I wanted a vehicle to park like underneath the house. And I found this great little truck um, from the Dollar Tree. It's like a little farm truck and I thought we would just update its color. It was already blue, but I kind of wanted to make it like this agave color. It kind of matched that beachy blue of our haunted beach house, kind of coordinate together. And the paint job wasn't great on this little guy anyway. Kind of had like a, a little plant in the back of it. And I just pulled that out and then just with a tiny brush, just going all over the little truck, trying to make it look like a little beachy truck. Just one more decoration for the yard underneath the house. I guess it's a yard. It's kind of more like a beach underneath the house. And just using my paint pens to touch up any details on that little truck. And I thought it would be cute. That can be like a little blue truck full of pumpkins that will definitely go with fall and for Halloween. And I thought it would be perfect parked underneath. And we have a couple little tiny pumpkins that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm just painting a skewer brown to make some little stems for those little tiny pumpkins. And you know, I said I got that little truck at the Dollar Tree. I think I got that actually at the Dollar General for like $2. And so I'm just adding those little stems to that pumpkin and I'm just gonna glue those in the back of our truck. These little tiny pumpkins were the perfect size. And we can park it right underneath the stilts here of the truck. And I'm gonna attach it with hot glue just to make sure that I don't lose it. And then I'm gonna glue the little black flamingo in the front yard. Just touching up its paint a little bit there. Now to decorate the house, I'm gonna make a ghost out of a seashell by just taking a little white shell and drawing a ghost face on it with a black marker. Then I'm gonna make a shell spider by attaching a black seashell to a little toy spider from the Dollar Tree and painting that all the same color of black so they'll look good together. And we can have the haunted beach house is gonna be attacked by the little shell spider and the little shell ghost I thought can be peeking out of an attic window I didn't think it looked quite creepy enough, so I am distressing the beach house a little more with a little antique wax by Waverly to try to make it look a little bit older and a little bit creepier, a little bit more haunted, if you will. So I'm gonna put 
the shell spider on top and the little ghost I'm gluing just outside one of these little attic windows. Like it's kind of peeking out of the window. And these were just shells that I found at the beach. And then I'm gonna have this giant shell spider like attacking the roof and glue that on as well so everything stays in place. My son absolutely loves this thing. He is dying for me to get it out and decorate with it. Now my little tentacles are dry enough and so I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. I'm using chalk paint um, by Waverly in the color of pumpkin and I'm just carefully with a tiny brush going in there and painting the tentacle. Um, this continues to hard. Um, this model magic from the Dollar Tree, it's so easy to work with. I love making stuff out of it. And I'm gonna go in and paint all of my little tentacles that bright orange color. So it looks like a, a giant orange sea monster attacking the house. Now to kind of make the house blend in with the base, I'm just gonna go around the edges of that board and paint them agave blue too. And we have it, we have our little haunted beach house. Is this not the cutest? I absolutely love this and I'm so glad that I added the extra features like the sea monster with my son's recommendation. And this is how it turned out. I love the fact that it's up on stilts, totally gives me that beach house vibe. Okay, our next DIY is going to be a sea witch. I'm gonna use one of these little orange traffic cones from the Dollar Tree for the body of our sea witch. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of paint all over with just some ivory chalk paint to kind of cover up some of that bright orange so that doesn't show through like in the final product. And I thought we can make use like a witch head from a Dollar Tree and make it look like a sea witch with lots of fun coastal details. I needed burlap and the only thing I really had was this burlap roll from Walmart. And so I'm gonna try to make her like little witch's cloak out of that, even though it's not real wide, just tying off that first piece with twine and kind of draping it over. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one. It kind of has a finished edge on that and I wanted it to be all frayed and look all wild. And so I'm just cutting that finished edge off. And this one I kind of crisscrossed on the first one so they kind of overlapped. If you had a bigger piece of burlap, you could kind of do this all out of one piece, I think. And so I'm just gonna keep going back and forth until I have like a full like dress or cloak for my witch. Again, just cutting off the finished edges, kind of going a different direction, tying it on, and I just keep building it up until you can't see any of the traffic cone. I'm tying it a little bit more um, to kind of create the body of our witch by just tying up and down the um, cone. Then I'm just going around and kind of trimming that into a circular fashion where it like kind of spills off on the ground. Now for the witch head, I got one of these little creepy little witches from the Dollar Tree. And all we want is like, we want that creepy like witch head, <laughs> right? Now it's attached to like these little wire arms. At first I was gonna take them off and then I thought we can probably work with them. I want to glue the head directly to the traffic cone though. So I'm cutting off um, just the burlap here on top so I can get down to the surface of that cone so I can like glue that plastic to plastic to try to make this a little bit stronger. I don't want her head to fall off. And I'm gonna glue the little witch head on top of the traffic cone with the arms still attached. And the arms are like wire kind of wrapped out of a foam. So that's what she looks like at this point. Now I'm gonna continue to use that burlap and continue to make her cloak. So I kind of make a piece that's gonna kind of cover her front like that. And just attaching that to the, the cloak we already have on there with some more hot glue. And that's gonna be like the front part of her little burlap dress. 
Now, this material is the like creepy cloth from the Halloween section at the Dollar Tree. It's the ivory. And I thought we could use that to also make her cloak super creepy. Now, I'm going to cut out some more of those burlap rolls and kind of make a cape to go over her dress. And so I'm going to glue that on each side of her little foam arm. And I'm glad I decided to keep the arms because it does provide a little bit more structure for her body. Again, just gluing that down with hot glue. And I'm going to kind of fold this over and glue that down so it kind of has like the top of a cloak like it would where it would be kind of buttoned together. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side, gluing it on both sides of the arm and then gluing um, a little fold back so it lays kind of cool. Then I'm just going to glue that burlap down to her arms so it kind of stays put and stays on where it's supposed to. And our little sea witch is starting to come together. Now this is the creepy cloth. You know, they also have this in black, but I thought this ivory would look really cool in coastal. And so I'm kind of like draping that over the burlap. I thought that might give her a nice creepy feel. And so I'm going to glue that to the top and kind of around where we have the little cloak that we made out of burlap. And the burlap will kind of shine through, through that creepy cloth because, you know, it's got a lot of holes in it you can totally see through. And she's going to have this creepy little cloak. You could probably also do that with like a fishing net or something like that as well for another coastal touch. There's a little bit of fabric left over after I drape that on her. And so I'm just going to go and trim off the excess fabric. I like a little bit of it to hang over, but not too much. And then I take that extra piece that we cut off and I kind of drape it over her again, just to provide another little layer of her little cloak. Now for our witch hair, I'm gonna use one of these little child size grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I thought that'd make perfect witchy hair for her. And so, it's all tied together on a grass skirt. It doesn't really matter. You can use a child size or the adult, whatever you've got. And I'm just cutting off a piece that I can kind of wrap around the witch head and kind of tie on top of her head. So I'm going to tie that off with the twine that was on there and knot that up to give her some witch hair. Now, of course, it's way too long, so I'm going to give her a haircut and kind of put that on the little witch head, kind of like a crown. And I'm just gonna attach that with some hot glue. Now for the witch's hat, I'm gonna use one of these little tinsel witch hats from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna get rid of all of that crazy tinsel stuff. Super messy, but just cut it, unwind. It's gonna give you a perfect little plastic cage underneath to make a little witch hat for our sea witch. So I'm just using some of the brown Dollar Tree rope and I attached it to the top of the plastic hat cage at the top. And we're just gonna simply wind around and around and around um, using hot glue here and there, but mostly it kind of stays in place until we cover the witch hat. This turned out super cute. This would be really cute as just a standalone decoration, even maybe even for like a tear tray for Halloween or something like that. It turned out really cute. So I needed to start a new package of rope. This is the probably the skinnier brown rope that I'm using. And now we're just going and gluing that around the cage, the brim of, of the witch hat. Now this is the perfect size witch hat for her head. It fit perfectly. So I'm just going to cut that and glue the ends down. And then I'm just going to kind of burn off any of the fuzzies. Now, I was worried that you were going to be able to see the plastic, ca the plastic cage underneath. So I am going to do um, a little bit of rope on the inside as well to cover the inside of the brim. Um, so that you can't see any of that plastic. It's going to look more like a finished product here. So just going around that rope until you can't see any more of the black plastic cage.
pretty much used that entire scrap piece of rope that I had there. And now it's time to try it on, the hat fit. So we're gonna use some hot glue inside the cage and we're gonna glue that on top of our little sea witch's head. Now every witch needs a broomstick. So I'm gonna use just one of these wooden dowels. This was from a um, barbecue stick maybe I had around. And then this is like one of those little cinnamon sprigs from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm just gonna attach those together with hot glue and it gave me the perfect size broomstick for our little sea witch. Now to make it a little stronger, I am gonna use some of that Walmart twine, hot glue it and kind of wrap that around where they come together. It provides another little cute touch to our little broom. And it also helps it to stay together. So that looks really cool. Um, I'm just gonna kinda have this little um, broom sit next to her instead of her riding it or anything cause she's kind of like got no legs. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kinda glue that up against her arm. So it looks like she's kind of holding on to the little broomstick. Then I thought a seashell for our little sea witch hat. Of course she needs some beachy touches here. So I'm just gonna glue a seashell to her hat Just a random button I put for the top of her cloak that I got at Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna put a little Dollar Tree, a starfish down here, kind of leaning up against our little sea witch. And she turned out so cute. Now I thought the face looked a little plasticky, so I'm just going over it with a little matte Mod Podge to kind of take away any of that plastic shine and to make her look a little bit duller. Otherwise, she's perfect. I love the green. I love the creepy little witch face. I think she's perfect. And this is how our little sea witch turned out. She's so creepy. I have her there with a sand pumpkin, a pumpkin that I covered in sand. And she has her little broomstick, a little starfish. Just love her. Okay, our next Coastal Halloween DIY is going to be a rope spider. I'm using one of these large tinsel spiders from the Dollar Tree, and just like that little witch hat, we're just having to cut and unwind the tinsel. And from all of it, it's gonna leave us with the perfect cage to make a coastal rope spider. So just going ahead and taking all of that mess off and we can get started. I'm gonna use the white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is kind of the thicker one, maybe the six foot. And I was trying to figure out how exactly I am gonna build this, but I decided to start in the middle and kind of spiral. So I just attached it with hot glue to the cage and I'm just gonna keep working in that pattern to make a circle. Making a circle out of the rope is totally really easy. And that's gonna take care of the body part of the spider. We're just gonna keep making that wider and it, until it covers all of the plastic cage. This spider was actually pretty easy to put together and it just turned out so cute, I love it. So just continuing to work like one section at a time. Um, I didn't want my hot glue to set up. So I would just do like a quarter and glue it down, making sure that I keep the rope tight up against each other because I don't want you to be, to be able to see that plastic cage underneath. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna cut it there and we can go ahead and glue this down. Kind of cutting that piece a little bit of an angle to make that kind of blend in a little bit better with the circle shape that we did. And that rope is pretty thick, so you're gonna need some sharp scissors definitely to be able to cut that effectively. Now I'm gonna go ahead, it's got three you know, strands of the rope twisted together. I'm gonna go ahead and unwind the rope to give me a smaller rope that I can use for the spider legs. So I'm gonna start underneath here by hot gluing one of those strands. 
onto the plastic cage and then simply wrapping the leg with that. You could have also went up and down with a thicker rope, but I really liked the woven quality that this comes out with by wrapping it with just a strand of that thicker rope. So all the way to the end and glue it and cut it. And then I'm gonna speed this way up. So you can see that I'm gonna do the same thing with those strands for all eight of our spider legs. And it does take a little bit of time whenever you do one of these rope projects, but man, they just turn out so pretty and um, so coastal, perfect for Halloween. So we got that side of the spider done, and now we're just gonna do the same thing here on the other side. I really need to keep my hat out of that shot. <laughs> And then that's only going to leave us with the little spider head part that we're going to have to cover. And I'm just kind of unwinding one piece of that rope at a time to give myself a nice long piece so it's long enough to cover the entire leg without starting and stopping. Super cute. Now for the head, I'm just wrapping it with those strands as well going all the way over. It did kind of have some little pincers at the end. I didn't really do anything with those. I just kind of trimmed those off. And now I'm also gonna do the underside with some more rope. So it's a finished product all over. We have a really cool rope spider. And then to hang it, I'm gonna use another one of those strands and just kind of make a loop at the end, tie it off. We're gonna glue that to the underside of our spider. And so that will serve as a hanger and it's also gonna be like a spider web for our little rope spider. Just making sure that's good and attached. And this DIY is complete. Let me show you how the rope spider looks hanging from my wall. Isn't that adorable? I just love how it turned out. And some people even called it a mummy spider, which would work as well too. <laughs> okay, our next DIY, I found one of these scrap pieces of um, carpet at Dollar Tree. So I thought I would try to make a ghost rug for Halloween for the floor. So I'm using one of these little wood um, ghosts that I have from the Dollar Tree just for an inspiration of uh, the shape of a ghost and just trying to rough sketch that on the back of the little white rug remnant that I got at the Dollar Tree. Then I'm just simply using a very thin, heavy duty like razor blade from the Dollar Tree to cut through that plastic or rubber backing on the back of the carpet and we wanna cut out the shape of a ghost. So just make sure you have a surface underneath of you that you don't mind cutting through because you kinda have to push pretty hard with that razor blade to get a cool cut like this. So we're cutting out the little ghost tail, going around the little ghost arms. I didn't make it too intricate, so it's not too difficult to cut. And we have now a ghost shape out of a white rug. So we are getting there. Now I'm just using um, a little lint roller to get all the little tiny pieces of carpet off, little remnants from being cut and stuff like that. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. I thought for, a, you could leave it like that, but I thought for a more of a finished edge, we're gonna go ahead and finish the edges of that and so I'm just gonna make sure that I have it cut and cleaned up as much as I can. Now I got it all cut and then I decided one of its arms were bigger than the other. And so you can always cut it smaller. Can't put back, so I just made that arm a little bit smaller. Now I'm just gonna use some of this Dollar Tree rope and that is how we're gonna finish the edges of our little ghost rug. Now for the face, I thought I would just paint it on. I'm using some chalk paint. I think this was like, 
mm, chestnut, I can't remember the shade. It was a brown color of chalk paint and I used those little daubers from the Dollar Tree to give me perfect scissors. And chalk paint works well on fabric, it also works well on rugs for a very simple little ghost face. Now that rope from the Dollar Tree, the brown rope, I am just simply attaching that around all the edges of our ghost rug with hot glue. The rope gives me another coastal touch to this DIY um, and it finishes the edges to make it look like a complete, um, a really finished rug. So I go all around all of the edges of the ghost and glue that on. Just cleaning up any hot glue that may have went where it shouldn't have went and getting any little strings of glue off of that. Just gonna do another coat of that brown chalk paint for the eyes and the mouth to make sure that stays on there and it's nice and bold and easy peasy. We have a little coastal Halloween ghost rug for our house. Didn't that turn out cute? I think it's so fun. Okay, our next DIY. I'm going to turn some of these little skulls from the Dollar Tree into vases. So just using a like battery operated candle as reference, I just kind of needed a circle. I use that to draw a circle on top of the skull head. And then I'm just going in with a razor blade and cutting that circle out of the top of the skull. This plastic from the Dollar Tree is really um, thin and so it's nice and easy to cut. Now, I don't really like the color of the skull. I want it to look more bone-like, so I'm just gonna mix some of my, um, my own homemade paint. I want it to look kind of ceramic, and so I'm using acrylic paint, the white acrylic paint mixed together with baking powder to try to give me like a really cool, textury ceramic feel to these little skulls. And so I'm using that kind of all over. I really kind of like the texture that that provided. It was kind of cool. It kind of turned out pretty cool. And so I did the same exact thing to two more skulls from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we would make a set of three planters all together um, with some fall leaves in them, but with a coastal Halloween feel. So that is what they look like once I get them all painted. I did go over each one with like maybe a total of three coats of that baking powder and acrylic paint until I got like the perfect finish. Now for the base, I'm just gonna use a thrift flip sign that I found, a nice chunky wood sign from the thrift store. I always love getting those half price at the thrift store. I'm gonna go ahead and paint over the words that were on there um, with just some white paint to kind of cover that up and give us a blank slate to work with. It, it was black and white writing, so definitely trying to mask those words. Now for each one of the vases, um, I'm using just floral foam from the Dollar Tree, just little tiny pieces that I have left over that is gonna fit down inside there to give me just something to like stab my plants into because again, I'm gonna make these little planters for some artificial greenery from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use fall leaves in the color of blue. I love these from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so pretty. You could also mix together like the blue and the ivory together, but so cute. And then I found a couple of them that had like the little white pumpkins on them as well. A few that are just a little bit different and just kind of mixing those together. And I love the blue and the white together for fall. I think that looks so fun. So just trying to kind of fill them out evenly. I only had um, one pumpkin in each and so I had enough to do too, but I kind of want them all to be the same. Now for our wood base, I'm just gonna cover that with some of that burlap roll, the six inch roll from Walmart, and um, gluing that to the underside of the sign. And that's gonna give me a nice steady base 
that I can put those um, planters on. Since they're made out of that plastic school material, they're not very heavy duty without a heavy duty base. Then for a more coastal touch, I'm just gonna do a couple rows of the thinner brown rope from the Dollar Tree along the front and the back just to kind of break up some of that white and just to give me another little coastal touch to this project. And I think the rope looks really nice uh, combined with the uh, burlap on the top. Now I'm just trying to find the center and I'm gonna simply hot glue that plastic skull planter to the middle and then I can kind of figure out from there how to glue, where to glue the other two skulls on. And there we have it. We have a little coastal skull planter for Halloween. I think this is not only beautiful, it's like super creepy with a little ceramic looking skulls. And then we have the blue fall leaves and the little white pumpkins. I hope you're enjoying this video. I wanted to take a moment to tell you about our private Facebook group. I'll post a link below. We would love to see what you're working on. We have the craftiest viewers on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over there. Okay, our next DIY is going to be a rope black cat. So I picked up one of these tensile cats from the Dollar Tree. I think it's like supposed to be like a day of the dead decoration because it's got a lot of busyness going on. And all I want is the little plastic cage underneath so we can make a fun coastal cat. So I am just clipping all the tinsel off. The ears are plastic, but they were like covered like in a like cardboard material that was glued to it. And now we can start building our kitty cat. So I'm using that brown rope from the Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna simply wrap all the way around the cat. Um, just using hot glue what I need to to secure at the beginning or the end of a piece. That's about how far uh, my piece went. And I'm just trying to start and stop my new ropes on the back where you can't really see it. Where I'm gonna display this cat, you can kind of see it from the back and so I wanted it to be covered um, and the rope in the back too to make it look nice. So once I run out of rope, I just glue down a new one and start again. Now since the head of the cat is like kind of circular, I thought we could do around and around and around with the rope. So I kind of am doing that, but I'm doing it kind of in an oval pattern by starting with a line bending and then just going around and around until like the kitty cat face is covered in a nice rope circle. Now I do make this a black cat, but it will look really cool to leave it a brown cat as well. Or you could even do it with the right white rope from Dollar Tree as well. Now I'm simply going to wrap the cat ears, attaching with hot glue to the back if I need to, and I did that with both of my cat ears. Now to kind of fill in any of the gaps, I'm just using some twine from Walmart there to kind of go in the gaps between where I did the face and the ears to fill up any areas. I don't want to see that black cage beneath it, and just a little flame to get any fuzzies off. I thought about giving it like a shell nose, but I kind of decided against it. I'm using chalk paint in the color of ink. Chalk paint works really well on fabric, and so I thought it would work well on rope, and it actually did. I'm just using a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and doing a very distressed black all over the rope just to make my cat a black cat, because it needs to be a black cat for Halloween, right? Now I need a sturdy base to stand this on, and so I'm gonna use one of those bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree, trying to find the center point. And then I thought I would use a um, ruler, just a wood ruler, to try to make a stand for a cat, because I want this to be standing up. Now to cover that up, all the craziness I have going on the back, I'm just using um, some of that burlap roll from Walmart kind of cutting that out to size 
gluing that on with a ruler inside. And that's also gonna cover up the back of the cat head and kind of give it more of a finished look from behind. Now, I, I needed a way to try to make this sturdy, and so I was drilling holes in the little bamboo cutting board because I kind of want to try to make a, you know, like a slot, like an opening that I can glue that ruler down into. I'm using a combination of wood glue and hot glue and sticking that ruler down in there and trying to get the hot glue, you know, to stick it for right now and the wood glue for a later, but it just was not sturdy enough. And so I'm gonna try again, this time just with hot glue. And then I'm gonna glue along the rope on the front and the back as well, letting that sit to dry a bit. And then using just a wood block, this is a giant Jenga block from Five Below, on the back, just to make it stronger because I was afraid it might fall over and I wanted it to be really sturdy. Now this little cat's gonna be at the beach and so I just put a layer of school glue down and I'm covering that with that white sand from the Dollar Tree because I want our little coastal black cat to look like it's visiting the beach. And I just keep adding layers until I get a good coat after I use sand, I like to use that spray glue for the next coat of glue. I also get that at Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to put another coat of that white sand down to cover up the base and to kind of cover up that block on the back that I had to add as well. Now, I wanted to add a few pumpkins for Halloween, and I got some of these little blue fabric um, pumpkins at the Dollar Tree. And then of course they're at the beach, so I thought like maybe some seashells would be cute too. So I'm just gonna glue some seashells down to our sand. And then I wanted to do the pumpkins too. I'm just kind of updating um, the little stem with a little ivory distress and the pumpkins too, just to make them look a little bit more coastal and not quite so cheap kind of lighten them up a little bit as well with that blue like velour like fabric that was on there. And I'm just gonna glue those little pumpkins over on the other side of our black cat. Now I thought I was done, but my son was like, cats have tails, where's its tail? And I'm like, oh, you're right, it really needs a tail. So I'm gonna use some of this heavy duty floral wire from the Dollar Tree and just kind of like bend it into the shape that I think a tail would be because the, the cat didn't have any kind of tail to go with for reference. And then using that same rope that I used for the cat, I just glued it at the tip and we're just gonna simply wrap that around. That wire is really flexible, so even if I kind of mess up the shape in this process, I can always like rearrange that. I just kind of want a cool like cat tail shape for our final project. Sometimes I have trouble finding that heavy duty floral wire at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes they only have the thinner kind, but I really prefer this really thicker gauge wire. It's great for projects like this. So I just continue wrapping and gluing that rope down until we have a, a cat tail. And then that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna burn off the fuzzies and then use that black ink chalk paint on the tail as well to paint the little cat tail black. And then I just have to figure out a way to glue this to the rear of my cat. I kinda want the tail like to be coming out from the side over on this left side of the cat. So I'm just using a lot of hot glue to try to glue that on. And this is how our little black cat turned out. I think it's so cute. I did a coastal black cat coffee bar last year and that's where I used him. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to do a skeleton beach scene. So I'm using just one of these pictures from the Dollar Tree. I don't care what the picture is because it's gonna be covered in sand. I like that it had a wood frame already. 
So I'm just painting over the picture with some cashew chalk paint, kind of in the same color as sand. Just something to cover up all that busyness that was going on on the picture before. Then I picked up some of these little toy Adirondack chairs from the toy department at Dollar Tree and I am distressing all over. I like the blue color, that's perfect, but they looked a little bit too plasticky. So I'm just distressing with ivory and wiping off any excess with a baby wipe. Then I picked up some of these little skeletons like tied together from Dollar Tree and I thought we could make a little skeleton family enjoying a day at the beach. So I'm just making sure I have my surface. This is gonna be my base. And I can kind of sit the chair kind of an angle like that. And that's where we can have like the mom and the dad skeleton sit. But it's also gonna leave me some room for some sand for the child skeleton to be playing in the sand. So I'm gonna coat the surface of that picture with some school glue. And then I'm gonna hot glue down our child skeleton, I guess they're all the same size, but this is gonna be our kid, to that surface. And then also glue down the Dollar Tree sand all over to make this look like it is the beach. And I wanted to put the skeleton down first because like any kid at the beach, he wants to be like buried in the sand. And so that's what the kind of goal we're going with with him. So doing a nice thick layer of sand all over. And the fact that there's a frame on there is nice because it helps keep the sand in there. Then I'm gonna follow that up with some of that spray aerosol glue to glue from the top. I also get that at Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna go over it with even more sand. I always have to do a more than one layer, but you can really only do one layer with the school glue because it's gonna get messy. That's why I switched to the spray glue after my first coat of sand. And I want him, I want you to be able to see that there's a skeleton there, but I also want him to be buried. <laughs> so I just finished up with a little bit more spray glue to make sure all that glue or all that sand stays in place. And then we have a little mom and a dad skeleton that can sit in the Adirondack chairs. I'm gonna paint um, some of these little white Dollar Tree pumpkins orange with some pumpkin chalk paint to kind of add to our little Halloween scene. And then I'm gonna use, this is just a ping pong ball from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use paint pens to paint on a simple beach ball design. Since they're at the beach, I thought that'd be cute. And a lot of times they're like red, white, yellow, and blue stripes. And so that was a pretty easy image to draw on there. And the ping pong ball is right about the right size to scale for these little skeletons. It's not very Halloween, the beach ball, but it definitely gives you that they are playing at the beach effect. So that looks pretty good. Just making sure I get my paint dry on my little beach ball. Now I wanted to make some clothes for our little skeleton parents. And so I'm using, this is one of those like orange chamois from the automotive department at Dollar Tree for fabric. And I just cut little swim trunks out for the dad so he can wear those, just attaching those to the skeleton with hot glue. Just some quick, easy little swim trunks for our skeleton. And then for the mom, I thought I would make her a swimsuit as well. So just cutting out little pieces of that chamois. It's great to work with because it doesn't, you can cut it, it cuts like felt. It doesn't fray or anything like that. And I just kind of make her some bottoms. And then I just wanted to cut out a couple little tiny triangles to kind of make a bikini top for mom, mom skeleton. And just trying to get those small enough. Using some little pieces um, for like the straps of her bikini to go around her neck and she should be good to go. 
The other skeleton is buried, so it doesn't need a swimsuit. But I thought that kind of added to the fun. And the orange chamois kind of adds to the orange Halloween feel. Now I'm taking a um, Jumbo Popsicle stick and cutting that down. I thought I could make some surfboards for a little day at the beach scene for our little skeleton family that I can kind of lean up against the edge of the frame like that. And I'm um, just kind of cutting them into like a pointier shape with my scissors to kind of make them look more like surfboards. So now that I have them cut to the size, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this one orange. And I'm gonna paint this one black using pumpkin and ink chalk paint by Waverly. I used a little fairy decoration with a little beach sign there to go on the table in between and um, the pumpkin underneath their beach chairs. And then I'm gonna make this surfboard look like a jack-o'-lantern with just drawing a simple jack-o'-lantern face on an orange surfboard. And then I'm gonna use a white paint pen on the black one. And I'm just gonna do some words on this one. I'm just gonna say like, bad to the bone. That's kind of like a, a surfing saying maybe for a skeleton. And I thought that would be funny. So once I get those painted, I'm just gonna simply hot glue those to the edge of the frame so they kind of stand up like that. And then we have just a few little touches. I have the beach ball, some seashells. I'm just gonna attach those to the sand with hot glue and attach our little pumpkin with hot glue too so that nothing falls off. And here it is, our skeleton family day at the beach. I think this turned out so fun. I really love it. It's so whimsical and definitely my coastal style. Okay, we are going to do a, another spider project. This one's going to be a coastal spider web. So I picked up one of these tinsel spider webs at the Dollar Tree. You guys know I love using these for cages. And I'm simply going to remove all the tinsel off of it. It's going to give me a perfect plastic cage to make a rope um, spider web. So and the most challenging part sometimes is just getting all the tinsel off and then cleaning up all those little pieces because I can't stand that stuff. So we got it all removed, cleaning up the mess. And we can start decorating this. I'm using just the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner one. And all we're gonna do is cover the web. I started the first piece just by kind of tying it on with a piece of twine, but you could also start it with hot glue. And I'm gonna glue that to the shape. It's kind of like an arched shape, which is one reason why I used the thinner rope instead of the thicker, because I was trying to with each section that I glue on, trying to retain that little arch shape to the spider web so it'll still look like a spider web when I'm done. But just doing that inner ring first, just working one section at a time, I'm gluing that on and trying to arch that up in there. And this is a quick, easy a DIY. Um, just gonna cover all of those black plastic surfaces with the rope and it's just a fun coastal decoration for Halloween. So once I get to the end, I just cut it down to size and glue that down as well. Now we can start working on the middle ring and we're gonna do the same exact thing, just one section at a time. I'm gonna glue that down in that little arch shape trying to cover up all the plastic so that you don't see any of that in the final project. And the outer ring, exactly the same thing. Just continuing that on. You could also do this with the Dollar Tree white rope. That would be really cute as well. It may have even looked better in my house because I have brown walls. So I had to hang this somewhere um, that doesn't have the brown background. And we have all three rings of that complete, just burning off any of the fuzzies or any extra hot glue with a lighter. And we can start working on the lines. So I'm gonna glue a rope going this direction, overlapping 
the rope there and gluing it to any of the black um, frame that's still exposed. And it works fine layering and on top of the other rope since it's not too thick. It's not real obvious. And um, just working with one piece like that is going to give you um, a more uniform pattern than if you were to try to cut and fill in all of those little areas. But I'm only working in one half section at a time, so it doesn't get too thick with the overlap in the very middle section. And we have all of the web covered in rope. And now we just need to decorate this. So again, I'm just cleaning up any hot glue. Sometimes uh, the strings from the hot glue can get a little messy, but this also really takes care of any of the fuzziness on that Dollar Tree rope. Now it came with this creepy like glow in the dark spider, but again, I wanted to give it a coastal touch. And so I'm just mixing up some light blue chalk paint and going all over to give us this giant plastic blue spider for our little rope spider web. And just going over it with enough coats to make sure that it's all uniform in color. And then we'll be ready to decorate the spider web with our little blue spider. I'm just gonna attach it like right about here with a little bit of hot glue. And easy peasy, we have a coastal Halloween rope web decoration. And this is how it turned out. It's so cute. I love the blue and the brown for Halloween and for fall. Okay, um, up next we are going to do, I'm gonna use one of these witch hat reframes from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to, you guessed it, cover it in rope. So I'm gonna do like the brim of the hat, just wrapping it in that thinner Dollar Tree rope. This is about how far a piece will go, about halfway on the brim, and we're gonna keep that going. I don't wanna do just like a witch hat, I wanna do like a sea witch hat to kind of coordinate with our sea witch that we made earlier. And then I wanna cover the uh, witch hat part with burlap. Now you can get burlap by the yard for like $2 and something a yard at Walmart. Um, but I didn't have any at the time, so I'm just using the rolled burlap. Um, and I'm just gonna have to piece that together um, from Walmart. And I'm just gluing that to the frame, kind of um, getting it around the edges, and then I'll have to use a second piece and try to blend those two pieces together by gluing it to the back of the brim, kind of pulling it through, and then using uh, that frame to glue it to, to give me that witch hat shape. Now I went ahead and I glued all this burlap on the witch hat before I really turned it around to look at it. And I wasn't very happy that you could see the little wires going across through the burlap. So if I were to do this again, I might line it with a little white fabric um, from the Dollar Tree before I put the burlap down. So I'm kind of just blending those pieces together. And then I'm gonna use that same rope that we used for the brim and we are going to glue that along the edges to kind of frame out the little witch hat, to kind of coordinate that more with the rope that we got going on around the brim. And using the burlap's a great way to um, not have to use rope on the whole thing. Now to kind of counteract those little bars being visible, I'm just cutting out a little bit of burlap and gluing that underneath each one to try to disguise those little wires that were bothering me just a little bit, and that did help a bit. Now for the sea witch hair, I'm gonna use one of those child size grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I have a little piece in the perfect width here. It's all tied to the twine already, and so I just have to find a way to attach that to the back of my sea witch 
hat brim. I'm just going to glue that on and that's going to be the hair. I want it to look like it's like the back of the sea witch's head. But even though it's the back of her head, I still want to decorate the hat. So I'm using a Dollar Tree, a sand dollar, kind of over on one side. And then I'm going to make just a very simple hanger with just some twine to be able to hang this. And then I thought she needed more decorations because she's a sea witch, right? So I just picked out like a whole bunch of seashells from my collection. And I just start hot gluing those around, adorning her little hat providing a little bit more decoration. And this was actually pretty simple to put together and it's a really nice size coastal Halloween decoration. And this is how it turned out. Our little sea wet witch hat. Super fun. This would be great on your front door for Halloween as well. And you can kind of see how big it was there. Okay, our last Coastal Halloween DIY is going to be a ghost. So I got another one of these tinsel things from the Dollar Tree. I hate the tinsel, but you know I always buy these because of these wonderful cages underneath are perfect inspiration to make a DIY. So I'm going to go ahead and cut his little ghost arms off after I get all the tinsel off because I want it to be kind of easier because we're going to wrap this in rope and then I was kind of worried about the tab sticking out I didn't want those to be visible so using some heavy duty scissors I just kind of cut those all off too so I didn't really have to worry about them when I go to wrap this in rope so we're using a, the white rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue it to the underside of the cage and get started and the reason I took the arms off is because this is kind of a cylinder shape, so I can just wrap all the way around without anything getting in the way. And then we can always reattach the arms once we get the body of our ghost wrapped. I'm just going to start and stop when I ran out of rope there on the back with a little bit of hot glue. And it'll be on the back so you won't be able to see it. Anytime you wrap something this big, it's going to take more rope than you think it's going to take. So just beware because you're also wrapping the back of it. Now, when I get to the end, sometimes I have to use a little dot of hot glue here and there to make sure it stays in place. But just trying to keep that all tight and our ghost covered in rope. Now, this kind of has the same vibe as that rope spider we did because, again, we're using the same kind of rope. And then I'm just reattaching the little ghost arms in between um, the pieces of rope where it would be by just gluing that cage back on. And now we just need to cover the rope arms with the rope. And so I'm just going to glue to the ghost that we already have and start just wrapping around those. And that's where you can see why it was easier for me to detach those arms. Um, because anytime you're just wrapping around something straight, it's going to be a lot easier than having to go around irregular shapes like this. So I just go until I can't see any of the plastic cage anymore, gluing that rope back together. And then I'm just going to attach an extra piece of rope here at the joint um, just to provide a little bit more sturdiness. And then simply we're going to do the same thing here on the other side of the ghost gluing and wrapping the little ghost arm in that nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. You know I love anything wrapped in rope. I think it gives everything such a fun coastal touch. Now I'm going to use a ruler um, just to kind of make a hanger for the back of this. And I thought it would fit nicely on the back of his arms and um, give me something to glue down that I can attach twine to to make a little hanger. Now for the ghost face I thought it would be cute to use seashells and so I just picked out some seashells that looked like a good mouth and eyes for my ghost and I just painted them black with some ink chalk paint by Waverly and we have some little shell facial features for our little coastal rope ghost and I'm just going to glue those onto the rope just with some hot glue. 
And you know, anytime I can use seashells for a coastal DIY, I'm definitely going to do it. <laughs> and then glue on the little face. Um, I had a little trouble with my hanger, like wanting to hang a little bit far against the wall. So I did tether that up a little bit with a little wood domino to make it hang a little flatter against my wall. And this is how my little rope ghost turned out. I think he's so cute. I'd like to thank you so much for watching my Coastal Halloween DIYs today. I hope I provided some good inspiration for your DIYs. And don't forget to like, comment your favorite project below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 10,000 subscribers. It's a rainy night, coming late out of the dojo No lights, dark out on the parking lot Looking for my car, thought I left it here before Got a feeling that something ain't right Moving shadows, hear the sound of two feet See my car where my keys, kinda getting spooky Oh God, now it's coming from behind My cell is gone dead as I slowly turn around and go oh, oh. Suddenly my brain's letting go and I laugh out loud as my elbows crash into an eyebrow Thinking what the hell I'm gonna make it somehow Run into a closed liquor store, break the window Grab a bottle of gin, take a swig, oh no Stepping on a slimy lump and no
It's a rainy night coming late out of the dojo No lights dark out on the parking lot Looking for my car, thought I left it here before Got a feeling that something ain't right Moving shadows, hear the sound of two feet See my car where my keys, got it getting spooky Oh God, now it's coming from behind My cell is gone dead as I 